In this video, we're going to set up the user's account and we're gonna create an actual account object so that we can start storing information about the user. Some of that information is going to include their total bank of decisions, so how many decisions they actually have left. Then we're also going to store when they're going to get their next free decisions. So on the free plan, we are going to have a three hour delay between the next free decision. We'll set up that time and hold it on their account. We can also use this account to store other things like if they're a premium user or if they have the unlimited subscription. So let's get started setting up the accounts. So you can see in our demo app here, we have no actual value here. This is a value we're going to want to save in Firebase and then be able to update based on questions asked or later in a purchases purchased can increase that number. So to start, we're actually going to create a new model and this is going to be called the account model. And this is gonna be called the account and we'll just create this class. And this is going to have a few parameters. Firstly, we're going to have the string parameter for the UID. Then we'll have an int, which is going to be the bank is what we'll call it. And the bank is going to represent the amount of decisions a person has in their quote unquote bank, their decision bank. And we're not going to require either of these. So we will add a question mark there. And then we will call the account on this to initialize it which essentially that is it. Similar to what we built in the question model, we have the to JSON and from snapshot functions, which we use to both update and get data from Firebase. We'll do a similar thing here. Obviously we'll just change this to bank and the UID is actually not going to be updated explicitly, but we will use this property to store the user's ID on their account that will just make it easier so we don't need to keep calling current user. We can actually just link it to the account object that we're going to be using and then just get their user ID from that. Uh, let's modify some of this as well from snapshot and we'll just update the bank here. So, so this is set for now and we should be able to update the bank and also get it from the snapshot. So now we have the account. So this account model is a little bit different than how our question model is set up in terms of where it's getting its data from Firebase. So if we look in Firebase here, we have our users collection and then we have our individual user here. And for the questions model, we are putting each individual question as a document in the collection for questions. And you can see the, the fields within this document map directly to the fields that we have in our question model. Now our account one is gonna be a little bit different in that it's really just going to be the fields that are on our user's document. So we have our user document right here and the account fields are actually gonna go right here and be directly on this document for that user's account. Really the naming of it, calling an account makes sense within the code, but all the data is going to be stored right here on this document. So now that we have our account model here, we want to actually set the user account to have a default bank value of three when that user is created. So we actually can do this over in our service auth service, and we're going to create a new function here called initialize account. And the first thing we're going to do here is get that document, which is going to be actually a type document reference. And for this, we will need to include Firebase Firestore. So as I was saying before, this document here of the user is the one that we're going to get here. So we're gonna need a Firebase Firestore instance, and then we can call collection of users and from that, we are going to get the document, which is going to be the current user's UID. We will need to remember to add that question mark there. So now we'll have a reference to that document and we can now call get on that document to actually get the document. So this, this line up here is just going to get us the reference to the document. And then this will actually get us the document and then we can call a then on this. And once we have the document, this value here is going to be the document snapshot. And I will convert this to a block. And then within this block, we first want to check that the document snapshot exists. 
which it should. And then once it exists, we want to set this document data, which the data we're going to set in this is that bank. And we're going to set that equal to three. So this is going to be the default bank value. So this initialize account, anytime it is called, is going to update this document for the user to set their bank equal to three. So we wanna make sure we're only calling this when we create a new user. And luckily up here in our get or create user, we're already, we already have that logic set up. So only within this if block here, we are going to create a user here anonymously. And then after we create the user, we can initialize their account with that three in the bank. So if we save this and rerun our app, you're going to notice nothing actually gets updated into Firebase. And that's because this user's account already exists. So what I'm going to do is actually just delete this collection. We did delete all that user's data. However, we didn't delete the user itself. So we need to go into Firebase authentication and delete the user for this account. And now we no longer have the Firebase user. So when we run this now, it's going to recreate that user because we no longer will have a current user. So after rerunning the app, we should get that user created again. So if we check on Firebase here, we actually do not have that new user yet. So if we, you'll notice the user is still being read as the one that we just deleted. If we go to the device up here and erase all constant and settings, we can clear out all of the stored information on this device, which currently for that app, it is saving the user as that current user. And this is something that Firebase does for you automatically. It will keep track of the device and the user, which is which is pretty nice actually. And it, it helps with offline mode and things like that. But when you're trying to do what we're trying to do right now, it actually interferes a little bit because we did delete that user from Firebase, but it wasn't deleted entirely yet in the app. I think over time that that local cache of the user would expire and then it would actually be gone. But since we're trying to do this all at one go here, it was still available on the device. So now you can see when the app loaded up, we have a new user ID down here. And if we go into Firebase, you can see we will have a new user created. And then we're also going to be able to look in Cloud Firestore and see that our new user has the default bank value of three. So that's gonna be it for this video. We now have our account modeled out and then we also have our account initialized with that initial bank value of three. In the next video, I'll show you how to hold this value and display it using a stream builder. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's going to be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're going to be able to see on YouTube for free are going to be that base app. And this is part of that. But if you want to see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com slash monetize, and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.